Hi there, and thanks for joining us matching an AP bill to a purchase order. So in one of our previous segments, we talked about taking a purchase order and receiving it. And then in another one, we talked about creating an AP bill uh, for utility purposes, uh, for insurance or something like that. But today we're gonna talk about, we received a bill uh, from a vendor, uh, parts vendor, merchandise vendor, inventory vendor, and we're gonna match it up to a purchase order. So in this case, before I jump over to that, here's a purchase receipt that was in the system prior. And you can see the purchase receipt is right here. And for the example, the purchase order number is 733. So typically when the bill comes in from the vendor, on the bill we have an invoice number for from their billing system. And so we put that in there and then we put in the name of the vendor. And then what we do is we can say, we can click here, add PO receipt. So over here, this gives us a list of all the purchase receipts that are outstanding for this vendor that have not been billed out yet uh, that we're waiting, expecting bills for. But that's not always the number you can look up. So over here, what we can do is look up by PO number and make this column a little bit bigger. By the way, if you're trying to make columns bigger and have the system remember, if you go over here, you can organize your columns and then click OK. So we're looking for, on the bill, it's 733 is the purchase order number that the vendor put on their bill. So we'll check that off. Notice this gets filtered down to the one receipt. There could be multiple receipts for one purchase order, which is why we have this designed this way. So we'll say add and close. And now what we've got is the item, uh, the five Motorola APXs at their price, a 750 in total. And a couple of things we could do here. First of all, we could change the price. So let's say they it comes in and it actually was a little bit less. Uh, the vendor was running a special and they gave it to us, even though we ordered it at 150. And the other thing we can do is we can add a uh, shipping or freight charge. So we'll look for our shipping item. Okay, and the vendor is telling us, well, it ended up being $12.85, for example. So we can add this and make changes. And then once we're done, we look up here, we can see that this matches the bill, piece of paper we're holding in our hand. This is the right vendor reference number. Uh, just like before, you know that, of course, here's our default terms for the vendor, but we can also change the due date uh, in case we need to. Maybe there's something on the bill in the calculation um, and we have the ability to change it to maybe 312. Let's do a little earlier. And then once we're done, and then we match up the amount here. And this is just a validation. This is a preference. So we match up the amount and we release it. And that's it. Thanks very much for watching. Again, if you have any questions, please see at the end of the slide, you'll see some contact information. Please uh, reach out and ask us any questions that you have. Thank you.